Hello everyone and welcome back to the coffee shop for another episode of Meta Monday. I've been a bit under the weather guys so I missed a couple of days on YouTube but I'm back for Meta Monday. Coming to an end of the uh, Dark and Saga Domination expansion. The finale is coming soon guys next week so expect some reveals coming up. Exciting times. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's jump into the meta report. Let's see what everyone's playing and what's been winning. So number one, guys, no surprise, my pick last week for the God tier, Red Gwen. I played some games of this deck as well on uh, on YouTube. Check out that video if you get it can get a chance. Very strong deck, very flexible as well. Um, here we have. Very high win rate, 56%, highest play rate at the moment. Number one, my god, yeah, no surprises here. But coming in at number two, coming in quickly, play rate not far behind the Red Gwen deck, is the Vain Kane deck. I uh, pointed this out last week as an uh, up and coming uh, riser, one to look out for. Kane has definitely become the uh, partner of choice for Vain. I still prefer Quinn, but this is very popular at the moment. It's a very interesting deck. It's uh, not the most synergistic in my opinion, but it seems to work. The Seedless Resurrection tends to get people up. I've played a game against this deck and <laughs> I think they had four or five copies of Vayne out. And uh, not much I could do against that. But yeah, Vayne Kane, number two at the moment in the on the uh, play rate list and uh, higher win rate than Red Gwen, so definitely one to look out for. Number three, Timo Zoe still holding it down. The win rate still high, play rate still high. It's a deck to play, I guess. <laughs> but it has been taken over a bit by Red Gwen and uh, Vayne Kane. Decks have all, or offer a little more flexibility, a little more um, longer term game plans. The plan B and plan C if you like whereas uh, Timo Zoe is basically an all-in deck going all in with the early losers then you get it get it get, get it get your game plan off you win otherwise you lose number four is uh, Trundle Trindamir this is dropped the play rate still quite high but it has dropped down a bit in the in the win rate possibly because Timo Zoe Zoe's play rate has dropped and uh, of course uh, Feel the rush very strong. Uh, feel the rush control very strong into the team of Zoe aggro deck, but not so strong against uh, some of the mid range options. So, but still, still a good deck, still in the meta. So, still aggro, mid range, control, all, all possibilities in this meta. So, something for everyone. Moving along, number five, Seraphine Victor, still around. So, the win rate. Uh, I think it's picked up a little bit from the last time we checked but uh, not very high as I, as I mentioned before but interesting this is quite a popular deck in uh, the current world tournament that's going on um, so definitely still a very strong deck as I mentioned in one of my shorts uh, last week bar, back alley bar is a key card in this deck and become more a back alley bar deck than a seraphine deck really at the moment Definitely control tap, uh, very controlled deck, and uh, has its place in the meta. And next up is uh, the Annie Katarina Twisted Fate deck, quite a tongue twister. Of course, the key card in this deck is the Raven Bloom Conservatory, and you've got uh, Bulge Auto working with Noxus, and uh, Big Finisher in Riptide Rex. We've come across this deck quite a bit on ladder, it's quite, uh, quite a strong deck as well. Uh, got lots of card draw options to get to your to your finishes and lots of spells to activate your Raven Bloom Conservatory. Not a bad deck, not a bad deck. Not quite my style, but something something you can play and get 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 some good results. With. Solid win rate and play rate, of course, styles played at the moment. Moving along, next up is Any Jin, very similar to the previous deck, but uh, you're running the Jin package here instead of the Bulge Water one. Interesting, the win rate is much higher than Cold Water uh, deck. Um, I guess very, this is a very aggressive version. Um, 
surprised the wind rate was high, but it is what it is, guys. <laughs> and the gym is still, still doing well, I guess. Maybe running it to learn control and that's how it gets its uh, higher wind rate. At number 8 is uh, Red Gwen. <laughs> still Red Gwen, this was, this was the combination that drops the leaves. Slightly low wind rate without leaves, but still very high. Very high, very strong deck. No surprises there. Moving on, Nora Vega. This wind rate plummeted a little bit. Play rate's gone a little lower as well, so not the strongest at the moment, guys. It's just you, you keep away, but Nora, Nora has a fans, you know. And um, surprising that this wind rate, I've come across this on ladder quite often and found it quite quite difficult to deal with. But yeah, that wind rate suggests uh, keep away, guys. Talia Ziggs, still still up there, still being played a little bit. Not the strongest deck at the moment, but a decent wind rate. So it has its place. If you enjoy uh, blowing up landmarks, go for it. Go for Talia Ziggs. See, interesting, they've got the Arsenal in here. A lot of people are dropping the Arsenal, but I like him. I like him in this deck, and with the control decks running around, he's very strong against control decks. At number 11, we have Plunder. Plunder is uh, kind of an evergreen deck, guys. It never goes away. It's, a, it's a quite a strong mid-range deck where you have uh, good aggressive uh, plays at the beginning. You have the mid-range, where it's very strong in the mid-range with the uh, Gangplank and Sejuani dropping off and still has some uh, in-game uh, promise, <laughs> I guess you'd say. But the Dreadway, a uh, copy of Feel the Rush to finish things off if things get late. This is always, it's kind of an evergreen deck. It doesn't go away, it doesn't go away. And that's a very good win rate for Plunder at the moment. Play rate's not very high down at number 11. But uh, yeah, yeah, if you're a Plunder player, keep plundering. <laughs> keep plundering. Number 12, we have Luck. Luck is also always uh, another evergreen one. Uh, aggressive deck of choice. Win rate's not great, but it's yeah, it's positive. It's it's luck, guys. Not much to say about luck. Right, you win sometimes, you lose sometimes. I'm a Dinger J. This has fallen quite a bit. I had this quite high up in my uh, tier list two weeks ago, and it dropped last week, and it's dropping even further this week. So yeah, that's. Well, I guess I thought it was, uh, I guess it's not doing as well as I thought it would. So, I'm a Jays, guys. Not as strong as uh, some of the other decks uh, around at the moment. Jinx Lulu, so good to see Jinx still lurking around, still, still kind of in the meta. That's a really, really strong win rate. 57.02. Incredibly strong. Incredibly strong. So if you want to play Jinx guys, go Jinx Lulu. This card aggro isn't very strong at the moment, so a bit of a hit and miss deck. I haven't uh, played much of this deck, but I know... I know... I know those numbers don't lie. <laughs> I can tell you that much. So, yeah, if you want to play Jinx guys, look at this deck. Look at this Jinx Lulu deck. Strong figures. Now this is the deck our team seem to be forgetting about all the time. I actually used this to in my road to masters so i I've, I've got all the footage just need to edit it and put that video out guys as i said i was a bit under the weather so i didn't get that video out last week but uh look look out for that i think i'll play it out uh, tomorrow probably strong wind rate solid deck um i have some fun playing with this deck it's, it's not the strongest i would say but it definitely uh, makes use of thumbs in neutral and it's good to play with it for me, he was a new champion in Varus. Good to try him out, he works very well with uh, Targon and Pantheon. So, yes, this, this is a fun deck. Play it, good win rate as well. Definitely gonna put it on my tier list this week. I keep forgetting about it for some reason. <laughs> but I'll put it up there, just, <laughs> just, uh, just bear with me on that one. And yes, this got aggro. This got aggro, Jinx holding it down. Well, two Jinx uh, decks at 16 and 17. Discord Aggro, Echo Jinx. Uh, interesting Discord, Discord Aggro putting in better numbers than Echo Jinx. 
But as I mentioned, the Jinx Lulu deck is putting far better numbers than both of these decks. If you want to play Jinx, I'd suggest that's the way to go. But uh, yeah, aggressive players, it, uh, this, is, this is a hyper aggressive deck, the Discard Aggro deck. If, once it gets going, well, it's unstoppable. But uh, the other aggro, aggro, all the aggro decks, this, this has, it's going to have the teacher quality about it. Echo Jinx, I'm not a fan of Echo decks, predicts, a lot of predicts, but it's a decent win rate. If you enjoy Echo, have a go. Moving on, Hecarim Z falling quite, quite, quite a bit at the moment. Um, interesting, <laughs> it's fallen in uh, play rate uh, from, uh, just about every week since I started doing these match reports, but this is the highest I've seen the win rate <laughs> in all the time. So interesting. Uh, this is a trundle, this is the timelines deck. Interesting that the timelines card isn't in there, concurrent timelines. Um, lowish win rate, but it is a possibility. If you don't like Feel the Rush, maybe you can try timelines. Uh, it gives you a st much stronger mid game. Maybe slightly weaker end game without feel the rush, but yeah. Timeline is the nerf is working, it's working, it's uh it's magic. And loss number twenty. My favorite uh I was gonna say Fiora deck, my favorite vein deck is the Quinn deck. And the win rates dropped a little from where it's been from its lofty heights. Play wait, nobody's playing this anymore, everyone's playing Kane. But still my favorite Kane deck. I still like them. And so yeah, those are the most, most played decks guys. I'm um, going up to number 20 and have scrolled down a little bit. Surprises haven't picked up a little bit more. This is the Targon version of Seraphine. Pretty pretty as you can see, much better win rate than the uh, Shadow Isle version. So Surprised by that. Surprised by the, the low play rate actually, not by the win rate. And deep, some people so playing deep, some people so playing yes, so it's a good variety all, all in all. Mono Shurima, don't play Mono Shurima guys, <laughs> very low win rate. Rumble Sion, pull up a uh, discard deck that some people are playing, not, not the best win rate but fun deck I guess. I'm gonna scroll on up and go to load up the win rates uh, quickly. So we can have a look. So not much has changed in the meta guys. There hasn't been any patches or anything like that. But um, things have shaken up. Things have shaken up there definitely. Um is this win rate. Funky. Let's go to oh well, that's the lowest win rate. <laughs> Let's go to there we go. This was sorted in win rate. Surprisingly, very high win rate, very low play rate at the highest win rate at the moment is a Leona failure stack. Interesting, interesting. What's the look guys? But at number 93 in the play rate, uh yeah, well, take it with a pinch of salt. Numbers, the second highest win rate goes to First Twisted Fate, another interesting spicy deck. Mind Mel, this is a Mind Mel deck. Should be a fun deck, check it, check it out guys, have some fun with this, you'll get some wins. Jinx Lulu, pretty high up as well. Guys, maybe this is worth a look in, maybe I should have a play at this, yeah, at this deck. Jinx Lulu, very interesting. Third highest win rate of three. Number four, Vain Kane. As we mentioned in the um, in the play rate uh, discussion, very, this deck has come out all guns blazing. Very strong at the moment. That you can't argue with that win rate. Going down, Elise Nocturne, a nightfall fearsome deck. Interesting, interesting deck, guys. Worth a look at. Can't argue with these win rates, guys. Uh, Pirate Aggro! <laughs> I thought the uh, thought this one has been put to bed, but maybe maybe not. Pirates are still in there. 
in there so making getting some high wind rate i guess we're coming to the towards the end of the uh season would you call it the end of the expansion people are experimenting a bit so quite a few interesting decks coming up and uh oh they're putting in some good win rates so it's time to have some fun guys Elise Gwen, Red Gwen is finally makes an appearance here in a well two appearances I guess. <laughs> Elise Gwen, Gwen Katarina and Elise Gwen. Diana Nocturne, the nightfall, the full on nightfall deck. Surprised us for seeing uh, not seeing much more plays. Putting in good numbers and win rates so this is a deck I'd like to see more from the ladder but or or the Leona version as well. I think Leona is very strong. I think people are sleeping on it, but whenever I come across it on later, I get a bit scared, I get a bit so this, this is going to be a tough game. And uh, Red Gwen, strong showing from Red Gwen across the board. This first Nami Vars deck is uh, one I uh, noticed last week and it's still around. Still a few people playing this deck. First Teemo, Zoe. <laughs> Very high wind rate still. Trundle Vi, this is a timeline deck, should be with Revna in it. The Targon Seraphine uh, combination. It's interesting, guys. I think if you're a Seraphine player, you want to have a look at this Targon version of it. Aphelios plays quite well with Seraphine. So, yeah, my Vainton deck is all uh, lurking in there. So yeah, that's the highest win rate guys, went through it very quickly, uh, hope you don't mind. So, quick look at the tier list, a quick video today guys, coming towards the end of the end of the expansion, uh, not too much serious play at the moment, a lot more fun, of course uh, a lot of focus on the world championships at the moment, uh, not many people playing rank ladder games, so time to have some fun. On and welcome back and we have the tier list loaded up. And this is where we were last week. We had uh, Red Gwen at God Tier. And we like to change things up with this, uh, on this channel. So I'm gonna kind of put Red Gwen, push it down for a bit and let someone else shine, uh, shine this week. Red Gwen was, is very strong. A lot of people will say she's still God Tier. And they make a good argument for that. But I'm gonna uh, keep a little suspense guys before I show you what I think is good here. Timo Zoe may be dropping down into A. An argument to keep them up into S, uh, S tier as well. I'm happy with them there. And um, the deck I always forget guys. I'm gonna put them in right now. Pantheon Vowers. Here's my boy Boris. Um, I'm gonna put them high eight here. High eight here at the moment. I think they belong there. Zigzalia, just a bit of. Uh, I'm gonna move these guys down a bit. I think I'm gonna move Seraphine up. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna move Seraphine up. Seraphine has been seeing some success. Um, a lot of people playing Seraphine, so Annie. I think Annie needs needs to be bumped up as well. Leona, the Diana are strong, but nobody's playing them at the moment. So I think we need to to drop them down to B and put Annie up into into A tier. These uh, Raven Bloom Conservatory decks are, are quite strong at the moment. I mean, not that much in terms of win rate, but I think that's fair. Controls, controls win rate is really low, but really strong into some of the decks. Um, for the West down in C, Misfortune Swain. Uh, some of the control decks, not many people playing this. I think that's fair. I think I'm happy with that C tier. Jinx in B tier. Let's drop it to the bottom of B tier. 
Seraphine, uh, Victor, some people might say A tier. Leave them down in B. I'm gonna throw in Aphelios to join her there. The Aphelios deck is worth a look in. The Targon version seems to be stronger than the uh, Shadow Isles version. Both versions of course seem to run Victor, so we need the three of them together. And guys, you probably figured it out from the title, but I'm putting Bane back at the top. Bane Kane, I slightly just edging, edging, uh, edging out uh, Red Wind by fractions of a percentage point. So I'm gonna put Bane at the top this week, guys. Got cheer for Vayne. Very close between Vayne, these um, Vayne Kane decks and the, the Gwen decks. I've got Quinn still in there. <laughs> I can't get, I can't let go of Quinn. Quinn I think is still very strong with Vayne. But I think at the moment these seem to be the only two champions that are being played, played with Vayne. So interesting, so Vayne had a lot more, more teammates uh, pre in, in previous weeks. Uh, so now it just seems to be limited to Pain Kane, Pain Quinn maybe. And uh, very very closely followed by the Red Gwen. And uh, Team has always fallen a little bit. Definitely fallen from the where, where they were at a couple of weeks ago. Got Pantheon Veros uh, keeping good. I think they belong in A tier. Very high win rate at the moment. Very very solid matchups into into to just about everything. You can win against the most decks of this deck. You can also lose against them as well. I think Vague's still here down to down to the bottom of A tier. That's fair. Maybe maybe down to B tier as well. Still here, moving them down a bit, shuffling things around. As I mentioned, Diana, Leona, Nocturne. Uh, nobody's playing them, but I think they are much stronger than uh, people give them credit for at the moment. So yeah, that's where that's where we leave it, guys. I think it's Bane ruling the roost at the moment. Yeah, look out for all those reveals coming out soon, there. I'm sure they're gonna start this week. AA drops. <laughs> I'm looking forward to him. Let's see what he can do and all his darkened friends. Take care guys, see you soon.